I took the day off today and I went to go and visit one of the most emblematic cultural heritages that we have in Angola, and that is the Paris Museum, which is located in front of Luanda Bay. I think is one of the most beautiful buildings that we have in town. I had my breakfast, but I can't survive without coffee and milk. <laughs> I'm going to stop at the coffee shop. I have my cup because I have to go to the museum and I have time to uh, drink my coffee and milk at the coffee shop. So I'm going to take a cup and I always forget the most important thing nowadays, mask. Good year. Good year. While I'm stuck in traffic, <laughs> I'm going to drink my coffee and milk. I really need it. But it's nice. They make nice coffee and milk. Finally, <laughs> we're so lucky to find a parking because uh, the museum is in town. And in Luanda, it's very hard to find parking in town. My car there, the museum is just over there. I was so scared I was not going to find parking. This is the central bank I'm going to show you. So the museum, the currency museum, is right next to the central bank, Angolan Central Bank. Get in. It's a very nice place. It's beautiful. Okay, I'm in the wrong place. The entrance is that way. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never answer to no man, I still go. Go, 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 go. The museum is closed. The guards say. They're making like renovations inside the museum, no one can get in and he doesn't know when it's going to reopen. There's even some kids here, they came with the teachers, you know, to visit the museum, they're there taking pictures. So I came so far to the museum, it was such a headache in the traffic and the museum is closed. But anyway, I'm going to take a look, I'm going to show you the outside of the museum. The museum is closed. I think I'm going to have a walk at Bahia do Luanda, Marginal, and I'm, I have to cross the street. I hate crossing, crossing the street. I get very terrified. But the lights are not working. I'm so scared. <laughs> so I'm going to take a chance now. This is Bahia do Luanda. Take the best bus and put them on display. On repeat in your brain till you're feeling no more pain. Never slow yourself down, you can do some more. Push past start a pain and you find a door Open it up and finally explore everything that you got As I'm already in town, I should try another museum Up in front, there is the military museum And I'm gonna try that museum, I hope it's open <laughs> I'm at the military museum, I'm lucky, it's open <laughs> Let's go in, okay? 
The Fort of Saint Michael, which in Portuguese is also called Fortaleza de São Miguel, is one of the most symbolic cultural heritage of Angola. The fort is located on a hilltop called Morro da Fortaleza, which is right in the heart of Luanda city. The fortress was built as a defense structure during the Portuguese occupation. On the 11th of February, 1575, the grandson of a Portuguese explorer, Bartolomeu Dias, arrived in Angola. He was Paulo Dias de Novaes, and he was also the first captain governor of the Portuguese colony, Angola. One year later, on the 21st of January, 1576, he founded Rwanda as São Paulo da Assunção de Luanda. At that time, they wrote the Luanda with an O. I don't know who and when back in time decided to drop the O and start writing Luanda with the U. Anyway, I prefer Luanda with the U and not with the O. In the same year, 1576, Paulo Dias de Novaes ordered the construction of the fort and named it Fort of St. Paul, which in Portuguese stands for Fortaleza de São Paulo. During the colonial rule, the fort changed name three times. First, in, from 1576 to 1641, it was called Fort of St. Paul. And then from 24th August, 1641, to 15 August 1648, which is the same period that the Dutch invaded Angola, and they renamed the fort as Fort of Adenburg. In 1948, when Portuguese took over Angola from the Dutch, under the governor Salvador Correa de Sá, when he reconquered Angola, he decided to rename the fortress as Fort of Saint Michael, which was the name of the governor's saint of devotion. Until this day, the fort is still called Fort of Saint Michael, Fortaleza de São Miguel. It hasn't changed since then. This fort underwent a lot of constructions and renovations from the 18th century to the 20th century. And the first material that they started building the fort with, it was clay in 1576. But from 1638 to 1689, under the rules of João Lencastre, the material was replaced from clay to taipa and adobe. In 1705, the Portuguese started building in masonry and the walls were consolidated in stones. In 1946, an engineer Francisco Xavier Lopes, who was commissioned by the governor Pedro Alexandrino, he was told to inspect the fortress and he found that the fortress had a lot of defects that could compromise the defense in the event of a combat. And in 1881, adaptation work were carried out again, and a two-story building and a bunker were built. So when did this fort become a museum? So let me give you the background history of the museum. In 1938, the fort was classified as a national monument. And one year later, it was renamed Museum of Angola until 1958. 1961, the museum collection was completely remo removed from the fortress and it, the fortress resumed its military functions again. And the Portuguese military force command was based. And in 1978, three years after Angola independence, it became Museum of Armed Forces. In 1998, 
reconstruction work were carried out again outside the building. So from 2000 and 2013, another rehabilitation work took place and an underground space of 1,200 square meter was built and it's where the history of Angola fight for independence is kept. On the 4th of April 2013, it was inaugurated as a museum of armed forces. The 4th of April is a very special day in the history of Angola because it was on the 4th of April 2002 that the end of civil war was finally confirmed and 11 years later Angola was inaugurating the National Museum of Military History. This fort is a two-story building. On the ground floor is where we find most of the attraction of the museum and the fortress. It's on the ground floor that we find the first built museum with walls of ceramic tiles that tells the story of the Angola uh, fight for independence. It's also on the ground floor that we find, right in the patio, we find the statues of the first Portuguese that came to Angola from Diego Cão, Vasco da Gama, Paulo Dias de Novaes, and uh, Salvador Correia de Sá, and also Pedro Alexandrino. The statue of the Angola Queen, Queen Jinga, is also found right on the patio at the entrance of the museum. And you can also find the statue of the first Angola first president, Agustin Neto. It's also in the patio next to the statues of the Portuguese explorers that the underground gallery was built. On this gallery, it's it's where is kept the recent history of Angola fight for independence and many other battles that, that Angola was fighting for independence. One of them was the battle against the South African invasion that took place in Quito Quanaval and Angola won the war. So it's a very beautiful place to visit. Uh, I didn't know the underground gallery existed. I was surprised. The military guys showed me the way <laughs> because there is no sign indicating there is an underground gallery. So if it wasn't there, I wouldn't have known there was an underground gallery. I was really surprised and happy. It's really beautiful. Anyway guys, I hope you like the tour to the fortress and the museum. If you like the video, please like it, give your thumbs up subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so that you can get more videos like this in the future see ya